Hello T3 viewers, uh, today we're talking about fitness bands, these fellas. Uh, now these are causing uproar and controversy in the United States where certain manufacturers are being sued because their products uh, don't track heart rate and calorie burn as accurately as they're meant to. Imagine that, Americans suing each other. So I've come to uh, Guru Performance where they've got proper scientific type kit for testing calorie burn, heart rate and the like. And we're going to see how four of the top bands measure up against those results. I'm Kieran Alger. I'm an ultra runner, tech fitness expert, borderline crazy marathon runner. I'm just about to be put onto a treadmill, put through my paces and actually put through a lot of pain, all in the name of science, to try and find out which of the latest popular fitness trackers really comes up to scratch. First up, we've got the Apple Watch. This is a do-it-all smartwatch that does so much more than just fitness, but fitness is one of its key USPs. Next up, this is the Garmin Vivo Smart HR. It's the next generation of the Vivo Smart, which now comes with its optical heart rate sensor built in. Here we have the Fitbit Charge HR. This is one of Fitbit's most popular devices. And here we've got the Microsoft Band 2, the much awaited follow-up to the original Microsoft Band. My name is Scott Robinson. I'm a physiologist at Guru Performance. We're hooking up Kieran uh, with a face mask, and this face mask allows us to trap all of the air that he expires and also allows us to measure the volume of air that he breathes in. And from that, we can measure quite accurately his calorie uh, expenditure. If you want to see how we tested these devices in more detail, you can click on the link in the top right hand corner. Now, to be fair, these aren't really aimed at serious elite athletes. However, they do aim to give useful heart rate data and tell you how far you've walked. And most importantly, if you're trying to lose weight, they tell you how many calories you've burned. So, just how accurate are they? With heart rate, we used a chest strap on your first run, which is when we compared the Apple Watch and the Microsoft Band 2. In the second run as well, this is when we compared our devices against the Fitbit and the Garmin Vivo. If the average heart rate is quite far out, then you may think that you're training in one zone when actually you're training in another. Um, usually the range on those zones is, is, is reasonable, um, and I think that would be within the remit of the 141 that the uh, Garmin Vivo averages. So the positive here is that people can use these and feel fairly comfortable that in terms of average heart rate, yeah. it's, it's an effective device. I think the average heart rate is probably the most important in terms of when you go to the gym or if you go out on a run and you should try and aim for that average heart rate as opposed to looking at, at the max. And each of these devices has a different way of calculating calorie burn. Some of it's connected to heart rate, some of it maybe using other algorithms. But what we've seen here, what's been thrown up, is there's, there's very interesting results and, and quite a wide variation. Our system detected that you burn 142 calories in, in the 10 minute exercise period. The Apple Watch was a little bit lower, so the Apple Watch said that you burn 121. But interestingly, the Microsoft Band 2 was spot on, so that measured 142 calories over the 10 minutes. Less convincing when comparing our system against the Fitbit and the Garmin Vivo. Different exercise bout, this time you burn 167 calories, and the Fitbit was estimated higher, so that was 224 calories, so about a 60, 50 to 60 calorie difference. The Garmin Vivo significantly less, so 113. And that's just over a 10 minute period, so if you extend that to an hour's exercise and then over a day, yeah. actually what you can be looking at is potentially a, a, a snack, you know, it's maybe not quite a, quite a burger, but you know, there's, there's quite a significant difference that if you're eating uh, based on what you think you're burning, that yeah. could potentially be a problem, is that right? Yeah, I'd, I would agree. I think that if you are going to use these systems, these trackers to look at calorie burn, you have to almost take the data with a pinch of salt. Um, I think it's probably not accurate enough yet. Maybe the uh, Microsoft Band 2 and the Apple Watch are showing some promise, um, but it's probably not accurate enough yet to, if you looked at the entire day and how many calories you burnt, then to try and think, okay, well, that's how many calories I should have, or if I want to lose some weight, I should have 10% less, 20% less. What we can see is that the Apple Watch and the Microsoft Band 2 were the tightest. There's more variation when looking at the Fitbit and the Garmin Vivo, though quite a lot considering that we only measured one kilometre and usually a lot of people when they exercise will typically do more than one kilometre even if you're walking from the train station to work or whether you're going on the treadmill to do or you're going outside for a long walk you know if these are the differences we see over just one kilometre then extrapolate that to a day and, and it could be quite far out um, but I think what's also important to note is that everybody differs in terms of their exercise 
um, economy when they move, so they have different arm movements, um, different efficiency when they move, so then that makes it difficult to accurately track calorie burn also. Um, so whether these devices can then in the future also measure somebody's efficiency while running, that might help improve the accuracy of the trackers. So there we have it, the, uh, the test of the fitness bands, and the result's quite interesting. Just, uh, were you surprised by that, Kieran? Yeah, I mean, I've used a lot of these trackers uh, over the, the weeks and months, and actually this test has thrown up some, some real surprises for me, particularly when you look at the Apple Watch and the Microsoft Band really coming up as the ones that sort of hit most of the, the statistics almost sort of on the nail, yeah. and, the, and the other devices that, that you you would sort of naturally associate more with being fitness devices. Yeah, they're proper, proper fitness brands, as it were, which Microsoft and Apple are not. This particular class of bands, the Microsoft band maybe is a little bit more serious and the Apple Watch clearly is more versatile. But in this general class of band where it's a fitness tracker but it has heart rate monitoring, surely, because that's a step above just um, step counting, this is aimed at people who maybe don't want to go full on like ultra marathon running like yourself, yeah. so they're not buying like a big Garmin running watch. They're not that serious about it, but they are looking to lose weight and they are looking to do it in a more scientific way. And surely the calorie counts in particular, in that case, need to be accurate. And it, so it's, it's quite interesting how inaccurate some of them were. I mean, it's heartening that some of them, they're not so bad, but it's, I kind of feel like if you're splashing out that little bit extra, if you want the heart rate stuff, if you want to feel like it's a bit more of a technical device, surely that is with a goal of scientifically trying to get more fit or lose weight. And if it isn't giving you accurate results on that, that I'm like, mm, that's disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as I can here, <laughs> but it's. I, th I think you know. There's another way of looking at it is that you you basically use this device to benchmark, mm -hmm. okay, and then go from there. So you set your own parameters, yeah, and then see how your progress goes from there. To be fair to the, the manufacturers of these um, things, they don't claim necessarily rigorous scientific accuracy. And of course, as a user, you can get to know the device and it's foibles and you kind of work around them. But it's certainly, let, let's put it this way, I, I find it very interesting how accurate or inaccurate some of them are considering what they cost and the kind of market that I feel like they're aimed at. So that's what we think. Uh, do let us know what you think. If you want to find out how we tested these products, uh, you can watch this video more or less over here in this region of the screen. Um, but um, if not, thanks for watching anyway, thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking, and see you next time.